guys, my name's Sam, this is the Protégé Nets Podcast, and I'm coming to you from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where it is quite rainy today, which I enjoy. I love the rain. If you want to find me around the internet, I can be found on Instagram at Protégé Nets and on Ravelry at Orange Rosa Moore. Both of those links will be down in the description, as well as anything else that I share today. I also wanted to quick share that I have a new gardening video out, um, and I've just been doing those every other week, kind of the opposite weeks that I'm doing podcasts. And yeah, I'm basically documenting my year of garden experimentation. <laughs> I'm definitely not an expert by any means, but I'm just kind of weighing it and having fun with it. And I have a nine foot by five foot, I believe, balcony on which I have some things growing as well as where I start my seeds. And then I do have a 30 foot by 60 foot community garden plot. So if you're interested in that, you can find them on the same channel as this, and the the series is called Fruits and Roots, and I have a playlist where I will be uploading all of my additional content. But yeah, those will be opposite weeks of the podcast, because I'm trying to not overwhelm myself with editing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a decent amount of stuff to talk about today. I've had some strange knitting mojo, which has been directed at various specific types of knitting, which I will show you in just a moment, um, and I have cast on a couple of new things. What a surprise. So the first thing that I want to share is my new hat that I made. I believe I shared at the beginnings of this last week. This is just a ribbed beanie, um, and the yarn that I used is a Celtic Knit, Cel Celtic Knot <laughs> alpacas. It's a local um, alpaca farm. And it's this cool, like, marled white and black. And yeah, it's just a basic slouchy beanie. I've been wanting to wear hats a lot more since I've been at home all the time. Uh, just because I don't know. I don't know. It's just cozy. And it's also getting warmer, so I can't wear a lot of my other knits. So having a nice basic beanie is important. I used to have a... <sighs> A beanie that I made out of some sort of like big box store yarn that like I have tried to recreate many times and I have yet to find a yarn that is exactly the same it was like a really soft bulky alpaca blend um, yeah and I lost it at a flea market <laughs> and it has never been found again so yeah I've been trying to find a nice new staple hat and I think this might work hopefully kind of hoping but yeah it's very soft it's kind of fun because it has like a bit of a halo you can kind of see the halo and uh yeah I can see myself wearing this a lot so next so I've been watching the stranded podcast uh run by Amy Florence um and she has had this like baby knitting mojo for a while where she's been knitting a lot of little baby hats, and she knit a baby sweater, and was knitting baby blankets, and that just kind of, like, rubbed off on me, and suddenly I wanted to knit baby things. I'm not, ha I don't have a baby. I'm not going to be having a baby anytime soon. Maybe eventually, but, like, not in the near future. It's a complicated process. Um, <laughs> so... This is more so just going to go into, like, my box of baby things that I'm saving either for when we decide to have kids or if I have friends who have kids that I want to give a hand knit item to. So, yeah, I made this teeny tiny baby hat. The other fun thing about this is that this was actually um, one of the first things that I've done with my hand spun. So this is the Neon Galaxy hand spun, uh, the fiber that I got from Crafticorn that I did, like, the four different types of spinning with. This was one of the smaller skeins that I got out of that, and I used pretty much the entire thing to make this little baby hat. It was kind of perfect. Um, this is definitely, like, a newborn, like, very, like, newborn preemie sized hat. Um, I'd probably make them a little bit bigger because babies' heads get big real fast. Um, but it was a good first one, and worst case, this would definitely fit on an American Girl wall. So, anyway, this looks so tiny next to me. Like, look at my big head next to this teeny tiny baby hat. Anyway, I was very excited. It looks very cool with the hand spun. I definitely want to make more of these. It was really good instant gratification. You know how much of a product knitter I am. When I finished this, 
I was so excited because it was just like that and it was done. So yeah, baby hat. Then following the baby hat, I, I've been kind of ooh shinying with projects when I figure out that like, oh, I want to try to use this yarn for this project. I've been very motivated to try to start it right away. Like, so excited that I figured out what I was going to use this yarn for because I am trying to reduce my stash as I keep buying more yarn. I know, I know. But, um, yeah, I had bought, let me show you. I bought, I had, I didn't buy. <laughs> so basically what happened is, um, I had shared in like the first episode of the year about how my dad bought me some yarn on AliExpress and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it, and I didn't know what yardage it was. So I wasn't really sure even what, you know. So I had to guesstimate, basically. Um, and this particular yarn, as I was looking at it, I was going, this would, this would be a good baby sweater, I think. And it is. <laughs> I made this whole baby sweater. This is the Flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. And this yarn... Um... I don't know. It's yarn from AliExpress. I don't remember exactly what it was. I believe the label was in Chinese. I don't have it with me right now. I don't know Japanese or Chinese, so when I get these yarns that are either, like, from AliExpress, they tend to be Japanese or Chinese, and there's not a lot of English on the label. So what I've been doing, just a tip, is you can actually use the Google Translate app. If you don't have it on your phone, I highly recommend that you add it on there. And it has a camera setting where you can just point your camera at something, and it will try to auto-translate it. It's not perfect, but it's better than being completely lost. So I was able to do a little bit of translation. It didn't anywhere on the label say how much yarn it was, but it did say that it was some sort of silk. It was jumping a lot, so I don't know if it could even tell, but it did say something about silk and something about cotton, which I can totally buy. Um, I think it might be like milk silk and cotton, which is still, it's kind of like acrylic and cotton. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's really cute. It's got this little tweedy appearance. So there's little flex. But this there's like a strand. It's like almost core spun. And there's like a strand through it that has those little flex attached to them. So they don't come off like tweed usually does. Which is kind of good for a baby sweater. Um, so yeah, I knit the smallest size. And that I would not have been able to knit a bigger one than this. It is so cute. Once again, so tiny. Look how tiny it is. Uh, so yeah, that will be going in the baby box. I'm very pleased how with, with how it worked out. I've never knit a flax sweater before. Um, I've knit the socks from that series. That was one of the first pairs of socks that I knit. But I've never knit a flax sweater before, and I maybe will make one for myself, because it was very straightforward, and I don't know. Everyone could use a good plain raglan, you know? So, I knit a whole sweater in two weeks. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I love this color, too. It's such a pretty color with little flecks of, like, tweediness and stuff. Yeah. I dig it. And then I will be sharing... Woo! I will be sharing some acquisitions toward the end. Um, and with those acquisitions, I bought fiber. Um, I bought fiber from Hello Yarn, and they included a little extra bit. So I spun it up really quick because I really like the color and I just like wanted to, it was what was calling to me. So it's just this like light blue, it's got little tones of brown in it. I think it's really pretty. Very, like very delicate coloring. It wasn't very much, so I spun it up in like a day and I still need to um, soak it, but I just wanted to show it off. I try to always, like, let my yarn rest a little bit in between processes. I don't know if that's, like, I don't know what the reasoning is behind it. I've just seen people say that they do that. Um, and yeah, I just haven't gotten around to soaking this yet, but I will. And then I'll flack it and kind of, like, set it. So, yeah, I think it turned out really pretty. On to whips. Well, I kind of, okay, so I have a couple half objects, um, because I've been on a roll with sock knitting. Just need to sort through them. <laughs> so, the first half object that I have is Hermione's Everyday Socks. I finished one, and I've got another bit 
on the needles with my little stitch chicken stitch marker from uh, Marshmallow Witch. Freaking love that thing. Um, yeah. These go by really fast. I've knit this pattern before. Um, unfortunately, I felted that pair, so that's why I was pretty eager to go back and make another pair. They, they're they a nice, like, step up from a vanilla sock, so it's got a pattern, but it's not too complicated. Um, it has a modified eye of the partridge heel, so it's a heel flap and gusset, um, which fits my foot really well. I really like how they look. Um, yeah. The yarn that I used is Sheep's Clothing Yarn Co. in this space colorway. I do believe that I found this yarn on Tumblr, uh... And back in the day, <laughs> I've had it in my stash for a while because it was one of those, like, two special yarns. Like, for a while, I was like, oh, I'm not good enough to use this yarn. And then I just, like, I I had started a pair of socks with them before that I didn't like and I tore it out. And I think it was just because I love this color so much, I think it was just sitting in my stash because I was afraid to mess something up with it again. Um, but... Yeah, I think Hermione's Everyday Socks did the colors justice. They look so cool, and I don't foresee that second sock taking very long because I am barreling through it today in between work stuff. Does anyone else do that? Does anyone, I mean, like, I've been working from home since before all of this stuff happened, and, like, my best way even when I was in the office, to get things done was giving myself mini breaks, like, consistently throughout the day. So I would, you know, finish up an Excel sheet and then do a couple rows on something. Most of the time it would be my Northeasterly. And then I would get back to it and I would do another task. You know, I keep a checklist of all the things that I need to do. So, you know, do another task and then do another couple rows. And that really kept me going through the day. It would give my brain a break so I wouldn't get burned out. Um, well, still, it gives my brain a break so I don't get too stressed out and too burnt out on whatever task that I'm working on, especially if it's something really, like, mind-numbing, like data entry or something like that, where you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. It's really good to give yourself a break so that you don't burn yourself out. So, yeah, that's what I do, is I will just squeeze in a little bit here and there, and then usually at the end of my workday, once I'm done and I've logged off and everything, I'll get a little bit, you know, get something out and work on it for a little bit to unwind before I, like, do the things that I need to do for the day, so. Yeah, I don't know. Does anyone else do that? Where am I putting things anymore? Ow. Hit my elbow. So my next half, half object will, <laughs> finishing it will, will be will rely on me finishing my Hermione's Everyday Socks. I actually only have one pair of long one-inch circulars. I, they're high high sharps uh, because, partially because I just don't want to buy more needles that I don't need, but also I haven't really bought any extra sets of needles because I typically try to keep my amount of projects down. Um, and I know that if I had more than one pair of one-inch circulars, I would go bananas. <laughs> like with casting on socks because I've really been wanting to knit socks but I I feel better if I finish things so hmm. yeah so this bag is from Marshmallow Witch uh and I uh I showed this last week I finished the tube for my afterthought socks so once I am done I'm gonna cut this screaming a little. I'm still scared. <laughs> this is still such a like mind blocker for me is cutting into anything ever but these are gonna be cute little socks. I'm excited to do it. I have already watched the tutorial so I know what I need to do and I'm gonna make these into cute little shorty socks. So yeah I pretty much barreled through this tube. If if this isn't as scary as I think it is there's another yarn that I have that I might do the same thing with but maybe not. We'll see. So this is the yarn that I paired with it. I'm just going to put this like white speckly yarn. It has tan and gray speckles in it. Um, pair that as the toes, heels, and cuffs. But it has to wait. <laughs> but I'm hoping that by next time I will have finished both of these and I'll have two pairs of finished object socks next time. That would be cool. That's my goal. We'll see. 
we'll see what I actually want to work on. Now on to just plain whips. So this is the bag that I was talking about last week, I believe. I think I said something about it. I don't know. I refilmed last week's episode like 10 times or two weeks ago episode like 10 times. Um, so this is my OCD is a noun bag from Tomboy Femme Bags. I won this in the Knitting My Shit Together, um, I won this bag in the Knitting My Shit Together, uh, knit along for the Nether Garments pants. So, woohoo! And in it is a project that I literally just started yesterday, <laughs> um, I went, we went on a little day trip and I needed car knitting and then I didn't end up knitting in the car that much, but I did start a Bakhtis scarf. Is that what it's called? It is a free pattern that, oops. It's a free pattern. Um, I've been looking at it forever, but it has to do with like weighing yarn and I've never really felt particularly compelled to do that. Um, but yeah, whatever. I might just go until I'm done. Um, so I've had, I'll actually show you, I'm striping it with two different yarns that I've had in my stash. This was another one of the things where I was like sitting there just kind of like with the blue yarn for the sweater, where I was sitting there going, I think this would work. I'm just going to cast it on now. <laughs> um, so these are two yarns that I've had in my stash for a while that I've had trouble figuring out where they could go and I just paired them together and I think it's turning out pretty cool. This is a unlabeled alpaca yarn that's fingering weight that I got for Christmas a couple years ago. Um, I might have information about it somewhere and if I do I will talk about it next time um, because I did knit a hat out of yarn from the same place before. But once again a lot of these are from local alpaca farms and not all of them have a lot of information on like Ravelry. So sometimes it can be a little bit harder to track down information about them, but I really like this one. It's really cool looking. I don't even know. It's like kind of marled. It's got a lot of different tones in it and it's alpaca. So it's a little floofy. Just knitting with alpaca all the time now. And then this one is pyretin wool that I got in a Christmas swap. It was the first yarn swap that I ever did um, a couple years ago. And it's really pretty. It's like dark blue, brown, and like white, and everything in between. And it was just one of those things where like I always try to pair it with something and it just, it's very overpowering because it's a dark blue. But with these two together, it's very like, I almost want to say like New England seashore is what vibes I'm getting from it. And I think it'll be a nice addition to my shawl collection. And it's good um, mindless knitting because I don't like saying mindless. It's good, uh, brain break <laughs> knitting because it's really just, um, one increase row and a bunch of stockinette stitch. And because I am alternating colors, I know that my increase row, it's every four rows. So I know my increase row is actually going to be on my return row of this pirate and wool. So it really is something that I don't have to think about too much while I'm working on it. So it's kind of nice. So yeah, I worked on this a little bit in the car and I think this will be good kind of give my brain a break kind of project. And I'm excited about seeing how it looks when it's complete. I don't know that I'm really going to be weighing my yarn to see how much I need to do to finish it. If I don't finish off that yarn, that brown alpaca yarn is good for ornaments because it's a good neutral color. I did a Rudolph ornament out of it this past year, so, um, and I can also put some of that in my northeasterly, so I'm not super worried about that. Um, since I'm alternating colors, I'm not going to use up as much yardage of each one as I would if I was just doing one color, so we'll see what happens. But I'm really happy that I finally figured out what to do with those two yarns because I really do genuinely like them, but I wanted was just waiting for the right project. It's, oh, oh, it's so satisfying, though, to know that I finally found the right project, so. Next up is my Northeasterly. So it is now housed in this shark bag um, as of, like, two weeks ago when it was just bursting out of the bag I had it in before, and I was like, it needs an upgrade. There's still plenty of room. I have a lot of yarn in here um, that is up next to go in the blanket, but... 
Um, yeah, there's not, there, I have other places to store the yard, but for now, I'm just doing it in there. So let me show you how much progress I've made. It's been decent. So this is the third stripe, and I started here from the last podcast, and I actually finished it. I'm not going to be naming all the yarns, but if you are interested in what yarns that I used, um, I am keeping a running list on my Ravelry project of all of the different yarns that I'm using, because it's all scraps, um, and also some that I purchased, which I will talk about later. And then in my next stripe, I got a lot done. So I was all the way back here last time, and I made it all the way to here. And I'm actually using... Oh, it's just pulling a little bit. Excuse me. I'm actually using the very leftovers of the sock tube that I just showed you here. Uh, because there was a little bit of a weird part where it was like... Oh, no. I did drop some yarn. It's fine. I can get it later. Um, there was a little bit of a weird bit where, like, the yarn had broken and it the stripes weren't matching up because it looked like it was tied back together. I probably did that, um, but I'm just going to use that last little bit. Oops. I'm just going to use that last little bit in the northeasterly. That's kind of the whole point. So yeah, I'm really excited about how this has been turning out. It's been really good. Um, I actually have been using Habitica a lot to remember to take my pills and stuff every day. And um, because I'm now in a pill that I have to take three times a day, which is like, uh, did I take it? Did I not? Ah. Um, so I have started putting, I put in a task in there that was just work on my Northeasterly every day. So I have been, I think yesterday was the first time that since I've put it in there that I've missed and it was just cause I wasn't home. And when I got home, I was pooped. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been really good that I've, I've been working on this a lot and I feel really satisfied working on it, even though I'm such an instant gratification kind of person with projects. Um, it's been really nice to see the progress and throw in different colors and I don't know. I'm very happy with it. I've been having a really good time, you know, picking the different colors, you know, picking what's going to go up next and watching it evolve. So yeah, that I have a lot of good feelings about that project. I have a lot of good feelings about that project. Next, I cast on a crochet project, which I haven't been doing as many of recently. I have this stored in this very luxurious bag that I got eggs in for Easter like two years ago when we were making a Easter basket for one, my one coworker that was sick. <laughs> you know, it's the it's it works for this though. It's a good size for this. So what I cast on, and this is something that I've been planning to do with this yarn since I got it basically is a ba pillow. The pattern is by Alex Alex Creates. The pattern is by Alex Creates. Um, I'm I went down a hook size because my yarn is not super bulky. I'm using Lion Lion brand. I'm using Lion brand Fisherman's Wool. Um, I got it in a D stash. I had never worked with it before and I've always wanted one of these sheep pillows. It's just one of those things. I've seen a lot of people with them and I want one. So one of my baubles is a little messed up and now I'm distracted by it. Um, but yeah, so I got, I got three rows of that done. I'm just gonna go for a while until I feel like the body's long enough. And then for the head and legs and stuff, I have leftover um, blue sky wool stock that I had used for the adventure hats that I knit. Um, I really like this yarn and this skein of yarn that I got was a 200 gram skein and I got, I think it was 200 grams. I don't know. It was a huge skein of worsted and I got a lot out of it. So yeah, would recommend that if you need just like a basic wool yarn, wool stock is pretty good. I don't really have much to say about that though. It's, it, I do like, um, I, I used to not like making bobbles that much in knitting and crochet, but I've been enjoying working on the bobbles on that a lot. And I think it will be cute to sit it on this chair in this corner to have like a little, you know, sheep, little sheep pillow in my little knitting corner. Yeah. And then, so my last uh, work in progress is right here. I'm not going to detach everything because I don't want to make a mess, but I am spinning this fiber that is from Witchcrafty Lady. 
it's gorgeous. It's just amazingly gorgeous. I love it so much. So luscious. Um, yeah, I got this much done of a single, and I will keep working on that on my Electric Eel Wheel Nano. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do ply-wise, but I'll probably do a chain ply. Who knows? Um, yeah, it's been really smooth. Um, it's a Poldale, Falkland Poldale, I believe, blend. Um, and so it has a really nice long staple length. It spins really smooth, like smooth as butter. Um, so yeah, I've really been enjoying spinning this. I will probably be spinning a lot of this this weekend because it's going to be a rainy weekend. So there will not be as much gardening happening. But yeah, that's that. And I have more fiber that I just got. So I really want to like keep spinning and uh, I'm excited about all this stuff that I have to spin. So let's go and talk about some acquisitions because I have acquired many things over the past few weeks. I've been slowly ordering things because I like getting packages um, and I can't really like shop in stores right now. Um, I do miss like this time of year is when flea markets usually start back up and by that I mean like artist markets. We have um, we have one in Harrisburg called the Harrisburg Flea. Um, there's some that just pop up at random times that are specific events like this this weekend was supposed to be Arts Fest um, which is usually by the Riverfront Harrisburg. We have pretty frequent like outdoor festivals like that but all of those have either been canceled or moved online and like reduced in the amount of vendors that are participating which is a bummer because I really like you know seeing all the local vendors so anyway my replacement for that has been ordering yarn and fiber online which is good because I'm just supporting different people you know but not good for my whole reduce my stash goal but it's fine these are unprecedented times and I'm gonna do with it whatever I want I do what I want. So, I got some new stitch markers. I think I remembered to write down all of the things that I got that were new so that I can share them. But you never know. I do try to share everything that I buy when I get it just because, I don't know, I like to support people who I buy things from. So these are from Fennel and Fiber. This was the um, most recent mystery one. She makes really cool mystery uh, stitch markers for each month. Um, so this was the May one. And then she had a really cool shop update with some new stitch markers that I felt I needed. So I got the well-behaved women rarely make history. And then also those little cactus. It hates my face. There we go. So cute new stitch markers. When I have a project that I can put a stitch marker on, I will definitely be using those immediately. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna have to go. <laughs> I wrote things in an order, but it's not gonna be shown in that order because everything's jammed into this basket, basically. So as I mentioned, I got fiber from Hello Yarn. These are the two colorways that I picked. Oh, this one popped open. Oh no! Don't do that. My cat probably pulled off this twist tie because he thinks that they're fun toys. Um, yeah, so the first one that I picked out is called Sprout and it is Falkland. And it is some fun muted gardening colors, which I was into. Th this pink specifically is like, like a light mauve type color like dusty pinks really super into that right now it's got a little bit of blue a little bit of green a little bit of everything that i want right now and it's gonna make really cool yarn so i'm excited to work with that and then the other one that caught my eye is called cosmic energy and it's just it's just fun like look at those it's all over the place and i love it but also still like the tones that i like and this one is falkland Falkland. Falkland Merino. Um, but yeah, they're pretty floofy. I'm looking forward to spinning those. Look at me. I made new hobbies for myself. Um, I'm just gonna reach in the basket. So, I have wanted to do more embroidery and sewing. I actually have 
coming today fabric so that I can make a dress number one which I'm excited about I've got fabric because I need to make myself more face masks because I have elastic now and also I brain fart what else did I get oh I got backing fabric to go with these so yeah, I don't know. I've just wanted to do more sewing projects because I've been doing a lot of spinning, a lot of knitting, a lot of crocheting, a lot of that kind of stuff. But I want to sew. So I saw these. I don't remember if it was just like an Instagram ad or if somebody that I knew had gotten one. But it just appealed to me. So the company is called Drop Cl Drop Cloth Samplers. The company is called Drop Cloth Sample. Sam I will never get paid to do ads for people because I can't talk. <laughs> the company is called Drop Cloth Samplers. Um, so I picked the Milky Way sampler. It comes with a pre-printed sheet of fabric um, and kind of an instructional guide about the different types of stitches that you need to do. Um, and then you have to supply your own stuff, which is fine because I have my own stuff. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And then the second, that, I was originally just going to only get one sampler and leave it at that. But then I saw that they had these little pin cushion samplers. And like, I don't know about you, but I have, I, you know, I have my sewing kit and it has one of those typical like little tomato pin cushions. And I always thought that was boring. So this, it's two, you can make two out of this pre-printed sheets. Same idea where it has like an instruction booklet to tell you the different kinds of stitches, which like I'm trying to learn more embroidery stitches because I want to do more hats. Um, and then I also purchased some walnut shavings to put in the bottom of them. And then I'm just going to be using, I actually just, we got new pillows on our bed again. Um, so I saved one of them so that I can stuff the fluff in here. <laughs> Because I like to reuse things. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just they're flat. So I can reuse the fluff for in here. And that would be great. So those will be fun to work on. I'm really excited about that. And then I also did a craft decor order. Because Landon reopened their store. Let me yank everything out from that one. Because I have a bunch. So... The first thing, um, I had bought that cosmic, not cosmic, uh, the neon galaxy fiber from, um, from them and really, really super loved it. Super fluffy merino. Um, and when I had gone back to their store, I just, I've always had my eye on this one and I kept going, no, like I don't need any more fiber. Well now, since I have taken that restriction off myself and I'm just buying whatever I want, I bought this one. It's called Peaches. And it's like peachy, yellow, pink, and green, like, ugh, super bright and neon. And I thought that would be fun because I've been getting so many, like, muted colors of fiber. I was like, get more neon stuff. It'll be fun. It'll be shaking it up a little bit, a little bit different over here. Um, and then I also got a DK weight mystery bag. So since I have so much fingering weight yarn, I was like, I don't really need more sock yarn. But I don't have, like, any DK weight yarn in my stash. Um, so the mystery bag came with two skeins, and they match, and they're called Spooky. And this is 100% Superwash Merino. Look how fun that is. Yeah, this is kind of magical. So I'll have to find a cool project to use with these. I'm excited to see what I come up with. And then it, I also got some stitch markers. They were in the little sampler badoobal. And now I need to dig them out. There's a cute little bag, and there's tea and candy in here as well. Um, so there's this little guy. Oh god, I'm so bad at showing stitch markers, I'm sorry. This little guy. Little hearts. So cute. And then there were two of these. One black, one rainbow, which is just kind of perfect for me, like... I want to use these immediately and they shake. They're so fun. I love them. So I'm excited to use those. Um, so I talked about this before. I participated in the Indie Mini Sock Swap. 
any any mini sock swap <laughs> run by Pippin Pin and um, I was basically just looking for some extra interesting yarns to put in my northeasterly blanket because that's just like my big project right now so let me see if I can find all of them I did already like this one right here was from that and I got a bunch more and I'm gonna pull them all out is that all of them well this yarn is just tangled oh no there's two more yeah so these are them I got so many so I sent in two skeins of yarn and I got 10 mini skeins back. You get five mini skeins per 100 gram skein of yarn that you send in. I thought that was pretty cool. So now I have all of these fun colors. Some of them are sparkly, some of them are uh, variegated, tonal. Yeah, it'll be fun to integrate these into my Northeasterly blanket. It will add a lot of interesting colors. There is also a free pattern for the sprocket hat, which is the companion to the socks that I went to knit with that hinterland yarn that I showed last last time or the time before. Can't remember. Time is an illusion. But anyway, there's a cool hat pattern that came with that too. I would absolutely do that again because I feel like there's always at least one skein of yarn in my stash that I'm like, I love this, but I feel like someone else could love it more. And it's really a cool way to test out um, yarn from places that you either may haven't heard of before or maybe you've heard of them and you weren't really sure if you wanted to purchase yet yeah so each one is labeled with the yarn like what yarn like where the yarn is from that's what i'm trying to say each one <laughs> has what where the yarn is from on it so if you want to purchase more from that dyer then you can so yeah, that was that's all my acquisitions for right now. Like I said, I have more stuff coming in the mail and I order I'd ordered more stuff today even. So we yeah. <laughs> There's a steady stream of packages coming to my house. Um and my wife keeps buying me pins, which like I'm not complaining about because they're really cute pins. Like she keeps buying me pins and books. Speaking of books, I'm going to move on to the chatter segment. So if you came just for the knitting and the and the crafting, that's all there is, folks. <laughs> um, and I will see you next time. Thank you for joining me. So let's talk about some other stuff. Um, yeah, so my wife bought me some books. <laughs> Not that we needed any more books in our house. Every single room in our house has bookshelves in it with some semblance of books on it. The kitchen has all the cookbooks. This room has reference books and just like a pile of books over here. And then in the main living room, there's two bookshelves. And then our bedroom, the walls are lined with bookshelves because we are book people. <laughs> we are book people. Um, we don't really have room on our shelves anymore. And we're hoping that we will be able to buy a house before it gets out of hand. Because it... <laughs> books everywhere. That's what I'm trying to say, is there's books everywhere. Um... Anyway, so I had mentioned that I had never read any Terry Pratchett before, and my wife was like, you should read Terry Pratchett, you would really like it. Um, and we ended up, I don't remember how it got brought up, but we started talking about the Tiffany Aching series, and I was like, that sounds like my jam. So before I was even done with House of Leaves, she actually bought every single book in the series. She didn't have them. And, um, yeah, I started we F the We Free Men, and I've been liking it so far. I just haven't had a lot of time to read recently, or I haven't had a lot of, like, brain capacity to read. I've been very focused on other things, or just, like, stressed out in general about some life stuff. Um, but I do definitely want to set aside some time, because I now have all of the books in the series. There's five books in the series, so, um... Yeah, I don't have much to say about it. I'm only this far through, but I just think it's funny that my wife just keeps buying me books. <laughs> but there's also, um, so Greer Southers, who I've showed their her pins on here before. Um, she makes really cool, like, creature pins and stuff. Um, I have one, a couple that are glow-in-the-dark. Um, there's some that are glittery. Um, and so Becca <laughs> will be, like, she'll send me a post and be like, do you want any of these pins? 
Um, so she bought me a couple that were a pre-order, and then I think she just bought me a couple more yesterday. <laughs> so my pin banner is definitely getting some love. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, yesterday we went on a hike, which was a lot of fun. Um, we decided to take off yesterday from work, um, just as, like, a, a mental health kind of day. Um, went out into the woods. There were more people there that I was probably comfortable with, but it wasn't that bad. I definitely am glad that we didn't wait until this weekend to go out because, um, even with the bad weather, I think this weekend is going to be kind of bad. Um, so the park that we went to is called Ricketts Glen State Park. Um, it is about over, a little over two hours from where we live, two hours north. Um, and it's a lot. <laughs> so we actually, the last time we went there was when I proposed to her. Um, and it was just about three years ago. It just so happened that it landed that way. Um, so it was kind of funny that, that everything kind of worked out that, that we were going there just about our three year anniversary. Um, I was a little better prepared this time. Um, so if you're not familiar with the park, it, it it's pretty difficult terrain. Um, it's not like regular paved hiking trails. It's very waterfall heavy. It goes along the river. Um, and there's two branches of trails that have waterfalls on them. Um, but it's not, like I said, it's not like, oh, you're jaunting through the woods and then there's a waterfall. You're actually just walking up along where all the waterfalls are. Um, so some of the sections, it's just like zigzagging up a hill where there's like lots of rocks and tree roots. But some of them, you've got about this much path, like narrower than my body of like rock steps down a drop, like right next to a waterfall. It's intense. Um, and I wouldn't consider myself a experienced hiker, uh, but after I looked at the map, I realized that we pretty much went on all of the most difficult trails. And it's kind of scary when you go there because they have a bunch of signs about like, hey, don't be stupid. And people are kind of stupid. I saw a lot of people slip, like, next to the ledge of things. There were a lot of people with really small children. And, like, I try not to judge people, but if, like, you have to carry your child, you should not be taking them on, like, the black trails. You know, the trails that are black rated for being difficult the most it says most most difficult i understand that they're stairs but you shouldn't be carrying it. i was having enough trouble getting up and down them like i'm gonna judge you a little bit don't carry your child around like that not even like i strapped my child to myself like just carrying a toddler i was like what are you doing anyway <laughs> safety aside i have anxiety did you know that i get anxiety about other people too um Safety aside, since we had gone before, like, we went on a little bit of the less difficult area last time. Um, so, but it was enough for me to kind of understand, um, what to expect this time. Um, the internet lied to me and told me <laughs> that the loop we were going to take was 3.2 miles, and it ended up being about 5.4, <laughs> which is fine. Because we made it, but it was definitely more than I bargained for. Because it's one thing to, like, I've definitely walked five miles before, but walking five miles through very difficult terrain such as that, of course we made a joke about, like, it's difficult terrain, you know, you have half movement speed, haha, D D jokes or anything, whatever. Um, but yeah, 5.4 miles, one way you're hiking mostly downwards, um, the way that we went, you know, we were... Like you hike mostly downwards the one way, the one branch, and then to get back to the parking lot, no matter which way you go, if you hiked downwards down that path, you have to hike upwards to get back. Um, and the way that we went, we went right down the first path, went right back up, and then had to do like the flatter trail to get back to our parking lot. And by the end, I mean like the trail back to the parking lot was over a mile. I don't remember how much over, an it might have been almost two. And I was like, it's a lot. <laughs> but I made it. I had to take my time. Uh, luckily, she's very patient with me because I, my wife is definitely a little bit nimbler than me when it comes to stuff like that. I have better balance, but she's much nimbler than me. 
And also, she has, she's taller than me. She's got at least four to five inches on me, which, um, is mostly legs. So, <laughs> uh, getting, I'm okay having to climb up things where, like, my shortness may be a little bit of an impediment, because it's not as scary to, like, oh, I might flop forward a little bit. That's not scary. What's scary is stepping down something where, like, the step down is, like, the length of my leg. But <laughs> she walked ahead of me for a lot of that and would turn around, and it was just, like, very, it was very like, chival chivalristic. She would hold her hand out for me, and I would grab it and go down the next step. Oh, my God. And we would let people go past us, because I was like, I do not need the pressure of, like, these teenagers walking behind me. Um... But yeah, it was it was an adventure. I'm really glad that we went. It was really cute. I packed a little um, picnic lunch for us. I made us little paninis and we had applesauce. <laughs> um, but we sat right near the waterfall that I proposed to her at and ate our lunch. And uh, we got a lot of exercise in. Needless to say, today my legs are screaming. Sitting down is fine. Like, I don't feel any soreness when I'm sitting down. But the minute that I stand up, it's like the whole leg is just ugh. like I've been like stomping around the house because I have no control over my legs right now just kind of like stomp waddling because my legs hurt so bad um so I am also thankful for the rain because we're not going to be able to go out to the garden until Sunday this weekend so I will not be tempted tomorrow in the pouring rain to go tend to the garden even with my leg pain so that's good <laughs> What a strange predicament to be in. The other thing was, this past weekend, my wife and I did a blanket fort, which was a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it, even if you don't have kids. Just as an adult, make yourself a blanket fort. We set it up between our coffee table and a cat tree and our couch, so that it was just kind of like sloped up. I put little fairy lights on it, and we had it situated in a way that we could still watch TV and play video games and stuff, and it was kind of magical. <laughs> And it just kind of, I think it's important to do silly little stuff like that if you can, um, just because it kind of breaks up things. Do it this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. It is the perfect time for a blanket fort, you know? It's something special. It's something to mix things up. We had a great time. We sat in there and ate Thai food on Saturday, I think it was, and that was the best. It was really good Thai food, and it was the best. So, yeah. Get some blankets and make yourself a blanket for it. You deserve it. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all that I have to talk about today. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves and staying safe. Um, if you want, you should like, comment. If you're not already, you should subscribe. I've really enjoyed being able to do this for the past year now. Um, and... It's even cooler that there's people that watch it. Wow, I'm such a dork. <laughs> All right. Anyway, take care, guys. Bye.